رمضان تجلى وابتسم طوبى للعبد إذا تنمى Consequences of leaving fasts Is it just like leaving salah? Will it lead to kufr? Now this is quite important. As Muslims, we follow a particular aqidah. And why is that? Because our Prophet told us والسلام, that my nation will be divided into 73 sects. All of them are in hell except one. So they said, which one is it, O Prophet of Allah? The Prophet said, whoever follows my footsteps and the footsteps of the companions. This is the saved sect, which I claim, as well as you do, that we are, inshallah, among them. And how do we know that we are among them? By following the Quran and the Sunnah. Nobody else's footsteps we're following. Whatever we do, you ask me, you question me, you stop me in the middle of the street, if you can. And I'll answer your question. Say, Sheikh, how do you prove that the Prophet did what you're doing? And I'll show it to you from the Quran and from the Sunnah. Other sects can't do that. You tell, you tell them, why do you do this? He says, Simon says, you have to obey. But Allah did not order me to follow and obey Simon. Allah ordered me to obey the Prophet ﷺ. Going back to our question. What does this have to do with fasting Ramadan? If a person does not fast Ramadan, is he a kafir? First of all, do not play with fire. Otherwise, you're going to burn yourself. Those who play the takfir game. So... Look at me, I'm wearing this Saudi thobe and this red uh, shemag, we call it. I look like a sheikh. If I keep on looking at people and classifying them, hmm, this guy's clothes are be uh, uh, below his ankle. He's a kafir. This guy fornicates with women. He's a kafir. This guy consumes intoxicants. It's a major sin. He's in hell. He's a kafir. This is the treats of the khawarij. Allah did not send me as a judge. I'm going to be questioned about my own actions and beliefs, not about others. So why would I engage in giving takfir to people? Not that it is not part of Islam. It is part of Islam, but not to every Tom, Dick and Harry. This is something that is given and appointed to scholars of Islam. After fulfilling the conditions, this individual, he's a kafir. Did you make sure that the conditions are fulfilled? Did you interview him? Did you uh, interrogate him? Are you sure that there are no obstacles available in him that prevents us from labeling him as kafir? No, I didn't. But he did so and so. He's a kafir. You're wrong. The Prophet says, والسلام, whoever says to his brother, Ya Kafir, one of them is going to pick it up. Either he is truly a Kafir, it's going to stick to him. If he's not, it's going to deflect and come back at me. And I'll be described as a Kafir, and this is a serious offense. So coming back to our question, the person who does not fast Ramadan, is he a Kafir? Ahlu sunnati wal jama'ah, and this is very important. And this was mentioned in al aqidati al-Tahawiyyah, which is a big book that speaks about our aqidah. And it says, al tahawi says, and we do not label anyone as a kafir for doing something unless he makes it halal. We do not make or label anyone kafir due to a sin he committed. Unless we say that he, uh, 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 he says or believes that it is halal. Now, this statement also has been explained by many scholars before. In a nutshell, I'm not going to take you into 
details because as they say, the devil is in the details. The devil does not have the guts to come and discuss these things with us because it gets us closer to Allah. So it's just a metaphor. Now, Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah believe that no sin takes you out of the fold of Islam unless it is shirk or kufr or salat. Oh, Sheikh, why are you excluding salat? I did not exclude salat. It's the Prophet والسلام, who stated that between man and shirk or kufr is abandoning salat. Whoever abandons salat is a kafir. He has committed kufr. This is the Prophet's hadith. It's authentic. I'm not going to go there because our series as, uh, uh, are about fasting. This is what I believe. You can always watch the great debate that took place four years or five years ago in Birmingham, Green Lane Masjid, between the Honorable Sheikh Abu Amina Bilal Phillips and myself. We discussed this, whether he's a kafir or not. And you can judge for yourself. Beautiful debate, beautiful manners of my great beloved brother Abu Amina, and it was enjoyable. The weather was fine. Check it out. So I'm not going to talk about Salat. I'm going to talk about everything else. If I consume intoxicants, is it halal or haram? No, I, I know it's haram. But I like partying. I like to drink booze. I'm sinful. I'm committing a major sh sin. I'm still Muslim. Okay, what about the pillars of Islam? If I don't give zakat money, am I a kafir or not? What is my intention? Is my intention that zakat is not mandatory? No, I agree. It's a pillar of Islam. But I'm stingy. I don't feel like giving zakat. I'm committing one of the most heinous and major sins in Islam. But I'm still a Muslim. Do I go further? I think you got my point. What about fasting, Sheikh? My cousin doesn't fast a single day in Ramadan. Come, why don't you fast Ramadan? Isn't it a pillar of Islam? Said, yes, I acknowledge. But I'm lazy. I don't want to fast. You are committing a major and serious sin that would probably throw you in hell for a hundred years. I don't know how long. It's all in Allah's hand. Maybe Allah Azza wa doesn't punish you. But you're not a kafir. You're still a Muslim, but in great danger. So to answer the question, consequences of leaving fast, is it just like leaving salah? Will it lead to kufr? The answer is no, it would not lead to kufr until you believe. And I'll give you another example of the person who likes to drink booze. So he drinks booze. It is pre-recorded. It's not Ramadan. So this is pre-recorded. Don't think I'm, this is not live. I'm not with you in Ramadan. This time you're watching this, I'm in home, Jeddah, fasting with my kids. So someone who drinks booze and he acknowledges that it is haram and it's a major sin. Is he a kafir? No, he's a Muslim. Allah Azza wa may punish him and may forgive him. No one has control over it, it except Allah Azza wa A person who never put a single drop of intoxicants in his mouth, but he believes that wine is not haram. He is a full-fledged kafir because of his belief, not because of his action. He did not drink a drop in his life, but because he believes that it is not haram, though Allah has mentioned this in black and white, and we show him the evidences from the Quran and from the Sunnah. We fulfill the conditions upon him and we know that he has no obstacles. In this case, the guy has become an apostate. So this is a very important and big difference between the two. When a person makes a sin, believing in it, and when a person believes that the sin is not sinful and he refuses to acknowledge it and Allah Azza wa knows best. Yet, this leads us to a one million Kuwaiti dinar question. Dollars is underrated. 
equated dinar is high. So a person who does not pray, should he fast? Hmm. You are not the judge. What do you mean? Akhi, don't judge people and say, listen, you don't pray. You're a kafir, hence you should not fast. What would he do? He said, Allah, if I'm a kafir and I'm already in hell, might as well leave fasting. No, this is not your role. Your role is a da'i. Your role is to make people love goodness and abstain and refrain from evil and bad things. So if a person doesn't pray, yet he fasts, he might fast because of his belief in Allah. He might fast because of the society and those around him as a culture. It's not your business. Bank on it and utilize it. Use these positive feelings in him and ask him to start to pray. At least tarawih. You invite him to pray a, a, a fard prayer in the masjid once every blue moon. At least tell him that Allah's forgiveness is there. And if he succeeds in maintaining prayer that Allah Azza wa Jal would love him more and more.